Pitch design is the process of creating or tweaking a pitch so it behaves a certain way. Traditionally, this would be done with a pitching coach giving verbal cues like stay on top of it or pull down a lampshade to get the athlete to move a certain way. But in an era with easily accessible slow motion cameras, athletes can easily design pitches by themselves. An important aspect of pitch design is understanding the physics of a baseball. Now when a pitch is thrown, there are usually three forces in play, gravity, drag, and the magnus effect. Now you can't control gravity or drag, but you can control the magnus effect. Now the magnus effect describes a spinning object moving through a fluid. In this case, that'd be a baseball traveling through air. Now backspin makes a fastball appear to rise, topspin makes a curveball drop, and sidespin makes a slider sweep. More speed and more spin means more movement. But there's more to it than that. See, to make the ball actually move, the spin has to be efficient. So if I throw a ball with a bullet-like axis, that ball's not really going to move that much, regardless of the spin, because it's inefficient. But say I start making some adjustments and spinning more like this. Well, that's just backspin. That's a fastball's backspin. And if I were designing a pitch to appear to rise, that's what I'd be going for. It's vertically oriented, and it's spin efficient. The more bullet-like the spin, the less efficient it is. But how do you actually train to change your axis? With the slow motion settings on most phones, a regular baseball's laces can be pretty hard to see beyond a few feet, especially when spinning quickly. That's why I usually use the black and white baseball when working on a pitch. You can track the spin farther and more accurately, and it's really easy to make. You just take a regular baseball, take one of these little horseshoe things, and just color in with Sharpie. In session, you would record a cluster of pitches and see what happened compared to how it felt. So you can make a grip adjustment, re-record, and see how it changed the spin axis. I'll even sometimes make indications towards the camera saying that I'm making a grip change or something I felt on the previous pitch. As an example, let's take a look at a pitch I recently threw. Now I designed this pitch to have the maximum amount of horizontal movement I could make a pitch have. So I want to go as far left as possible. That meant dropping my arm angle, which is usually not a good idea, but dropping my arm angle to get as horizontally oriented of an axis as possible. I'm also trying to have it spin efficient because since this isn't my regular arm angle, I need it to move a lot to actually deceive the hitter. However, as you can see, by moving, this, by moving the frames back and forth, you can kind of get an idea of where the spin axis is. It's kind of between a slider and a curveball right about there. Now, what that means is it's not great in terms of efficiency. So it may be a regular pitch. I mean, it may have been a good pitch had it that been my regular arm angle. But since it's not, that pitch is not going to work for me. And it's, it looks like it's because my, arm, my hand is rotating early. It's going downward before I release the ball, thus enacting more vertical spin than the horizontal spin I wanted. So if I were to throw this again, I would focus on keeping my palm upward and through the ball. So when the ball comes out of my hand, my hand will be still be flat and the ball will come out spinning horizontally as opposed to this more bullet like spin. From there, it's practice, practice, practice. You can go further, like using pitch overlays to track tunneling, going frame by frame to track spin rates, or even using more advanced techniques to train ball seam orientation, but I think that goes beyond the scope of basic pitch design. The three key things are knowing what pitch you're trying to create, whether that's a rising fastball, a changeup that dives low and away, or horizontal curveball, knowing what axis creates those pitches, and then using all the information available to you, whether that's coaches, teammates, or black and white baseballs and slow motion cameras to pursue that axis. Well, I hope you learned something, and that's basic pitch design.